some 20 to 33 percent of global trade by sea passes through the South China Sea. It is also home to rich fishing grounds. What if China controlled all of that? It's at the core of international concern over China's actions in this body of water. Located in Southeast Asia, the South China Sea is claimed almost in its entirety by China through what it calls the Nine Dash Line. This includes territorial claims by other countries in the region. China has over time militarized many low-lying islands and coral reefs here. But five years ago today, an international court effectively ruled Chinese claims were illegal, particularly over this part, Scarborough Shoal a low-lying rocky outcrop that falls within the Philippines' territory, according to the court. The binding ruling by the Hague-based Permanent Court of Arbitration was in response to the Philippines taking China to court, but China refused to acknowledge the verdict. As a result, to this day, Filipino fishermen are prevented from accessing the coveted fishing areas there. Catching fishes like this in the Scarborough Shoal has become increasingly difficult. Internationally, these Filipinos' rights to fish here are recognized. But the fishermen say Chinese coast guards have been chasing and harassing them in the past years, threatening their livelihood. The problem here is that, in our own fishing territory, we are the ones who are pushed away. We feel that it's as if we are the thieves in our own area, because the Chinese Coast Guard doesn't allow us here. That's because Beijing never recognized a 2016 ruling by the Hague's Permanent Court of Arbitration. It proved that China had violated the Philippines' territorial integrity in parts of the South China Sea. A significant ruling given that China claims almost all the waters in the region. The islands in the South China Sea have long been China's territory. They are the legacy of our ancestors and we can't afford to lose a single inch of them. But the Philippines also claims parts of the resource-rich area. So does Taiwan, Brunei, Malaysia, Indonesia and Vietnam. This decades-long conflict has always been a flashpoint in the region. Tension has increased at times since 2013 as China started building and militarizing artificial islands in the South China Sea, prompting protests like this one in Manila. But the government's position has been less clear alternating between rhetoric and restraint. Let us be friends, but do not touch Pag-asa Island under it. Otherwise, otherwise, things would be different. But the fishermen aren't convinced. They say the country made too little pushback against Beijing while seeking investment opportunities. Their wish is very simple take action so they can fish freely in the shore again. Let's get more on this. I'm joined now from Manila by Richard Hedarian. He's an analyst and author of numerous books, I must say, including Asia's New Battlefield, US, China, and the Struggle for Western Pacific. Richard, welcome. The 2016 ruling went in the Philippines' favor. Why has it not been able to exercise its sovereignty over Scarborough Shoal? Well, as far as international law is concerned, the problem always was enforcement. It's also a question of diplomacy. How do countries uh, that win uh, international arbitration against superpowers like China, how do, you, how do they leverage uh, that legal victory or legal warfare uh, to gain actually concessions on the ground? So I think the problem in the case of the Philippines was that it legally was able to invalidate uh, the bulk of China's claims across up to 85 percent of the South China Sea and international water. Uh, we're talking about China's nine dash line and historic rights claims. Uh, but the the problem was that, you know, uh, the arbitration case was initiated by the former uh, Benigno Aquino administration, which was a liberal, American-friendly uh, 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 reformist administration. But when the result came out, we had a completely different person in charge in the Philippines, which is President Rodrigo Duterte, who, by the way, tried to pivot to China. So consciously over the past five years, the Philippine president has downplayed 
and sometimes even denigrated the Philippines' own legal victory in order to keep it chummy and close and intimate with his Chinese friends. And how has that gone down in the Philippines? Are Filipinos buying that? Well, first of all, it hasn't gone down well with Duterte's own uh, deputies. On multiple occasions, we have seen uh, the Department of Foreign Affairs, uh, the Defense Minister of the country, uh, the Foreign Minister of the country, reiterating uh, that that arbitration award was final and binding by inter uh, per international law, and that no matter what you know anyone says, including China, uh, the fact is that this is already a part of the fabric of international law. And in fairness to Duterte's deputies, uh, time and again, they have tried to actually solidify the Philippines' position on the ground. Not much gains on the scarborough show because of President Duterte's downplaying of the Philippines' legal victory, including over who uh, should have access uh, to precious resources in the scarborough show. Uh, but the Philippines, in fairness, over the past few years, thanks to the efforts of Defense Minister uh, Secretary Lorenzana and the Philippine military, was able to fortify its position on the ground in other disputed areas, including in the Tito Island and the Spratly. So the picture is quite mixed. It's not an unmitigated disaster. But of course, the big question was, how could the Philippines have done better in leveraging this legal victory to get more concessions on the ground, including getting access for its fishermen there in the Scarborough Shoal, which is just over 100 nautical miles away from the Philippine coastline. Correct. What could the Philippines have done better? Well, many things, right? I mean, the expectation was if we had a different president or someone closer in terms of ideological outlook and strategic outlook to the previous president, uh, the late President Benigno Aquino, uh, the Philippines had many options. One option was to take this issue, this legal victory, uh, to the UN General Assembly, take it to the EU Parliament, take it to ASEAN, different fora to put pressure on China to comply with it. Of course, China will always say, we don't recognize uh, the jurisdiction of this body, but China also wants to be a respected leader, doesn't want it to uh, be seen as an outlaw or bully. So uh, through a multi multilateral pressure, the Philippines could have got some concessions from the Philippines, not to mention bilaterally, the Philippines could have said, OK, maybe we'll not put that much pressure on you multilaterally, we'll not try to embarrass you, but in exchange, maybe you can give our fishermen more access uh, to right. resources in the Scarborough Shoal. Maybe you can stop uh, harassing them. So there were many scenarios that we could think about how to leverage this award, but none of that happened because you have a president like Duterte who prioritizes, prioritizes good relations with China perhaps above, you know, the interests of the Philippines at times. Now, the U.S. position on the South China Sea has also been seen as crucial to this ongoing dispute. And just over the weekend, you had Secretary of State Antony Blinken reiterate U.S. support for the Philippines if it comes under attack in the South China Sea. I'm wondering, based on what, everything that you've said, if that is a boost that the Philippines yes. needed to press yeah. home its legal right. advantage. Right. I mean, this is the synchronicity problem, right? Uh, when President Aquino was pushing ahead with this arbitration award, the Philippines was not getting as much support uh, from then-President Barack Obama, who was very cautious, who was very reticent uh, to take it to, to, to the Chinese, right? And in fact, when the arbitration award came out in 2016, the five years ago, President Obama immediately sent his top national security advisor, Susan Rice, uh, to China in order to bring down tensions. That has right. not been the position of his successors. Right. Donald Trump and Biden are taking very tough stance and sta standing by the Philippines. The problem is that they cannot be holier than the Pope. The Philippines itself has to stand for itself before its allies can stand for it. And this is the problem we're facing today. Richard Hedarian, thank you so much for joining us today.